Good morning. This is Youth Sunday. Um, I've said before, this is like herding cats, but you bring your cats to church. So it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great morning. Um, but we don't put any information in your bulletin for a reason. Uh, so enjoy the ride. Starting off, uh, we're going to have a little prelude. Um, this has been days in the making. Uh, <laughs> They're going to sing, uh, play the song Reckless Love for you, okay? Here you go. Thank you. 
was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you form. Faith commanded and the mountains move. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. chains undone sin defeated Jesus has overcome mercy triumph when the third day dawned darkness was denied when the stone was gone unstoppable God let your glory go on and on Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Go ahead and hello. Um, I would like to welcome all of you today to the classic, and I would like to welcome those listening to the uh, 1077 and listening and watching our delayed broadcast. Um, go ahead and turn someone, shake their hand, give a fist bump. <laughs> If there are any kids wanting to come down for a children's message, go ahead and come down. If you didn't hear, message for all ages, kids, come on down. Good morning. <laughs> um, hi. <laughs> um, I heard, did some of you go to horse, horse camp? I also went to a camp this past week, as you can tell. You went to camp. You went to camp for a day. <laughs> um, and... In my camp, they showed us how to love through the light of Christ. And 
just like this flashlight. I know. <laughs> that turn, that's not turning on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like this flashlight that shines into the darkness, our light of Christ needs to shine into the darkness. Hit the microphone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, right, had to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that the children, that these children know that their light shines through the darkness and God's love is for them all. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. A hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. So I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. King is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me.
Hi, um, will you join me in the affirmation of faith? Okay. <laughs> I will say yes as often as possible to the opportunities I am presented with, to the new coworker or student in school, to serving when asked, to allowing God to use me. I will speak only when I can approve upon the silence by pausing to think about my words before saying them, by using my words to encourage and affirm others, by not speaking to hear simply my own voice, <laughs> by raising my voice in praise to God. I will give everywhere I go with open-handed living, with my words of affirmation, with using my time for positive actions, with a joy-filled and spirit-filled heart. darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond our creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God we will not be moved when the earth gives way for the reason an empty grave for the risen one is overcome now the silence breaks in the name of Jesus as the heavens cry let the earth respond Christian shouts with a voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God the earth gives way for the risen one is overcome and for every fear there's an empty grave for the risen one is overcome Holy 
song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show You can have a seat now. You can also have a seat now. So as we've been talking about at Youth Sunday, um, we just got back from camp, and we had a lot of life-changing experiences at camp. We have two people who are going to share with us today. First off, our lead batter is Chase Stetler. Um, Chase and I met at Camp Adventure my first week on the job. Um, he was a counselor, and he, uh, he had a really awesome thing happen at camp this week, so he's going to come up and share. Come on, Chase. Yeah, come up on stage, bud. Good luck trying to find a way up here. There's like branches and stuff. Be careful. Yeah, Vacation Bible School does that sometimes. Um, hi, my name is Chase Settler. For those of you who don't know me, which is pretty much everybody, um, I started attending this church about six months ago and started coming to youth group here about seven, eight months ago. 
a little bit intermittently, tried to start coming more shortly after that. Um, I come from Brookston, that's where I live, grew up. I just graduated from Frontier Junior Senior High School. And after our old pastor, Devin Cook, left there, we didn't really have a youth program anymore. And so for a few months after that, we were, my sister, one of her friends and I were kind of just left, oh, well, what do we do now? We don't have a youth program. Then Justin invited us to start coming to youth group here at Monticello, and that was wonderful for all of us. The people here were just so loving and welcoming towards us, and they made us feel like we weren't new, we were just one of them. So I've counseled at Camp Adventure for the past three years now. Met Justin there, went there originally with Brookston. This year I went with Monticello for my third year counseling. Wonderful experience as always. And while it wasn't necessarily as life-changing as I expected it to be towards the beginning, throughout the week it sort of became clear that there was something God was talking to me about that I wasn't 100% sure. I had already accepted Jesus into my life as my savior. Like when I was in eighth grade at Camp Adventure, that had already been done, so I was confused as to what in the world was going on. Took about a week off, of course, between Camp Adventure and Camp Epworth. I went up to Epworth, and through that, it became clear that I understood what God was calling me to do, and that was to join him and follow him in ministry. So after a few days at Epworth, everybody was going up on stage giving their testimonies, and that's, even though I was entirely anxious about it and not wanting to do it, God was saying, no, you're going up on stage and you're telling everybody, no, this is what you are going to do, no matter what you want. So I eventually went up on stage and I just said, hey, I'm Chase, told a little bit about myself, and then said, I'm being called to ministry, and that was that, and I guess now I'm off. <laughs> so we often talk about, come on up, Brett, you can come up, um, how we're a, a church that sins, right? A church that, that leads, church that is growing leaders, and now we got another one to send to seminary. Um, we got a little while, though. He has to go to undergrad first. Um, but, yeah, Chase is accepting that call. This is my friend Brett. Brett has, uh, has been coming to youth group for quite a while, um, been helping out with our worship band. Uh, Brett's had some, some slip-ups in the past. <laughs> we love him anyway for it, though. And he had an, uh, an amazing time at camp, so Brett, I want to let you talk about that. Uh, hi. As Justin said, my name is Brett, uh, son to Mark Michael, if you guys know him. But um, well, let's talk about last year first. Last year when I went to camp, uh, it was a new experience. It was my first year, and I didn't know uh, exactly what I was doing there. <laughs> but um, when uh, we had this worship, which is in a big concert hall, uh, all I did was sit in the back and talk with my friends and do nothing all day. But... Uh, I feel like I didn't connect to Jesus that year, and I didn't know why I was there that year. But this year when I went, I was sitting in the back for the first, on the first day, and then I realized, oh, you know what? I'm just going to go up front. And I sat with my, one of my friends, and, uh, me and me and my friend, we sang it out in the front row. And that day I realized, oh, this is, this is more like me. This is... This is who I want to be, and so I just, I accepted Jesus into my heart that day, and yeah. So uh, Brett is a new believer, and we thank God for that, and he is, um, he is anxiously pursuing that life of discipleship, so when you see him, tell him congratulations, he is now a brother of ours in Christ, so thank you, Brett. So you Sunday um, is really important, but we're going to pause for a quick second because there is an aspect of our youth ministry that we don't get to recognize enough, 
And we're going to do that today. So, Aaron. Today at Youth Sunday, we are celebrating something truly special. Today would mark Steve McKinley's 25th year serving youth ministry as a member here at Mumsy. As a way to celebrate, we asked youth of old and young to send in video responses telling Steve thank you for all he's done. And these are those videos. Hey, Steve. Um, thank you so much for saying yes to uh, helping kids know Jesus. Um, I'm one of those kids. Because of you, I would not be where I am at all. Um, pretty much from me being a young teenager to now, you've been there for me. And so I just want to say thank you. Um, every church that I've served, I say, we just need a Steve McKinley. And luckily enough, one of the churches I served, there was a Steve McKinley. But you are a special human that God has placed on this earth to share the love of Jesus with a lot of people. You've made so many disciples of Jesus Christ. You are the leader of the Mumsy Youth Group for the last 25 years, no question. I'm grateful for you. Mumsy is grateful for you. White County is grateful for you. The kingdom of God is grateful for you. Thank you for serving 25 more. You can do it. You're a blessing. Thanks, man. Hey, hey, Steve. We just wanted to say how awesome it is that you've been working with the youth at Mumsy for 25 years. We're so happy that we got to be a small part of those years with you. You definitely set an example of what it means to live like Jesus for me as a youth and then for both of us as lifeguards. And we love and miss you. Bye. Hi, Steve. Thanks for always showing up, for supporting us, and for teaching us about Jesus through your words and actions. You showed us what selflessness and commitment were all about. I just want to say thank you, Steve, for all you have done for us. You have been such an amazing leader for all of us. And um, thank you for uh, taking us in into your Bible study and showing us how to live for God. We are so appreciative for you, and thank you for all you do. Congratulations on 25 years with the Monticello United Methodist Youth, Steve. I know you have been a great mentor for several of us growing up in the church and you will continue to be for many more down the road. So thank you also for your commitment and your service. Oh yeah, got fireworks for you because this is such an exciting event. But anyway, congratulations. Um, I know that you will continue to be a great mentor for many others down the road. Thanks, Steve. Hey, Steve. Congratulations on 25 years in youth ministry. I uh, hope there's many more years to come. Love you. I appreciate what you have done for me and the youth in the youth ministry and wish, wish you the best. Hi, Steve. Angie Williamson here. Used to be Angie Brothers. All the way from Tennessee, I want to congratulate you on 25 years of service. I appreciate the impact you had in my life when I was part of the life group at the United Methodist Church. Hey Steve, uh, just wanted to say congratulations on 25 years in youth ministry. And I thank God every day for you being a part of a youth group. And I'm just happy to know you and for you to lead our Bible studies. And yeah. <laughs> So we have to pause it there because that video is 12 minutes long. Um, <laughs> Steve, would you come up for us, please? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So from our group, from the entire church, from the kingdom of God, we thank you for 25 years. I think Alex is right. 25 years more will do you. I think that'll be good. That'll do me in. <laughs> that'll do you in. That's right. And so we just want to tell you how much we appreciate you. You're going to get this whole video because it, I wouldn't want to watch this with all of you. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah, we'll let, that, let you have that. And thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Steve. Well, good morning. Um, I guess my first time saying that. This is your uh, first time here. If you're new, welcome. This is not normally what our stage looks like. Um, and this has nothing to do with the youth ministry. As long as, <laughs> don't blame us. We did not do this. Okay. VBS is uh, tonight, so we're really excited. Uh, if you uh, came in today, you have a program inside that as your connection card. or remind you of that. We love to know that you're here and alive and that you came to be with us today. If you'd fill that out for us, really appreciate it. If you're a first or second time person, 
Welcome again. Hey, uh, check those boxes for us. If you're a, a member or a regular attender, please uh, mark on there that you're here with your name. If you have any prayer requests, you can put those in the back. Uh, we have the prayer window in the back of your, or in somewhere in your bulletin, I think, right? Probably at the back. But yeah, uh, we have those who need prayer. Um, so let's, uh, let's go to our God in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that you're God. Because we all know that if we were God, things would not go as well. We thank you that you're God because of your willingness to create. God, your willingness to, to bring into life. You want us to call others into a new life with you. And God, whether it be a, a calling on a life as, as a pastor, God, whether it's just someone taking the first steps in their, in their faith, God, we give you praise because that means one more person gets to know the amazingness of our God. God, we know how awesome you are because you were able to lift our troubles to you, God, and you are faithful and just to listen to us. So, God, we lift up those who are sick today, God, those who are in the hospital, those who are coming out of surgery or those who may be going in surgery. We pray for those who are battling addiction, God, such a horrible thing. We pray that you would mend those hearts and minds, God, that those families would come connected again, Father God, that through your power, through your Holy Spirit, we can become closer as the body of Christ and surround those people with love. I thank you for the past week of, of seeing your, your children, your youth, Praise you with abandon, God. As they lift up their hearts and their words to you, God, you are faithful and just to pour out your grace upon them. And it's amazing to serve a God like you. I pray that you would allow them to be the spark in our community that lights a great wildfire of your spirit. That people would know them by seeing what you've done in their life. And that through that they would know you. God, I thank you for for servants. I thank you for Steve, God. I thank you for those who, others who have also served in ways, God, to build for the kingdom of God, that are truly calling, or listening to the calling you have in our lives to say, go and make disciples. I give you praise, God, for them. And God, as we sit here today in this, in this sanctuary for, filled with, with different animals, God, and trees and waterfalls and rocks, all the pieces of your kingdom, God. We pray for Vacation Bible School tonight that throughout the next week, children will come to learn about you in a new, exciting way and that the kingdom of God rejoices with us because we are willing to step out in faith and go after those children who need you the most. Let us be your hands and feet this week, God, in all that we do and all that we say. And let us pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So at this time, I want to invite up Rachel Swain. Rachel is one of our graduating seniors, one of the leaders in our youth group, and today she has given the message. She is a little nervous, though she shouldn't be, because she just rocked it at the drive-in. Um, but she is here to give you guys a message today, and I ask that you would show her some love. Just keep doing this and just catch it on the way down. Be fun. You want to hold it? Good morning. Uh, as Justin said, my name is Rachel Swaim, and I just graduated from Twin Lakes High School, and um, I'm also a member here at Mumsy. I've been going here since I was in preschool, so um, I'm going to tell a story about this girl that I used to know. Um, she was very shy. She, was, um, she wasn't really a talker. She would stand behind her mom whenever she had to talk to anyone. Um, when they were going up for the children's ministry, she would push her younger sister up in front of her because she was so nervous to walk in front of everyone. But everyone else thought that she was just being a good sister and pushing her sister, but in reality, she was uh, terrified. <laughs> um, she would be too scared to order her food at a restaurant when her mom would tell her to. And um, even just up to a few years ago, she was terrified to order pizza on the phone um, for her family. <laughs> 
But eventually she started going to youth group and um, listening more in church and uh, putting her trust in God. And God gave her courage to um, go out of her bubble and be less shy and talk to people and open up. Um, that little girl was me. Um, I'm still kind of shy, <laughs> a little nervous, and um, but God has helped me so much um, just coming out of my bubble and um, being who I am today. Uh, also, God, church, my family, and my friends have invested so much in me today to um, get me to be who I am spiritually and just personality-wise. Um, I also remember when uh, Blaine Lilly was preaching up here in middle school. <laughs> And right after he did that, I was like, oh, wow, I would never be able to do that. <laughs> but obviously, God had a different plan for me, so here I am today. Um, my family and friends helped me um, come out my, of my comfort zone. They pushed me to do things that I was too scared to do, and um, they taught me to learn to live less in fear. And I'm still shy, still scared, one of which is being up here, but <laughs> it's okay. Um, and these people have God, church, my family, and my friends, they have all molded my personality and um, my spiritual life to help me become who I am today. And as Justin said, we just got back from camp. Um, it's an amazing experience, and we just took 64 individuals to experience Christ. So that was amazing. Um, Um, I've been going here for the past five years to camp, and then I went two years at middle school camp, and this personally has changed my life so much. Um, I'm so thankful that I have that opportunity to go there and learn more about God, learn how to love, and um, come together to praise God. And I know that this isn't just my experience, as you've heard. Other people um, have talked about how much it has impacted their life, and I'm just so thankful that we have that opportunity to go there. But I know that we would not be able to do that without all of the amazing leaders that we have in this church and um, just without the entire congregation, so thank you. Um, I'm going to go into scripture. Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 9 says, These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord, with all you, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you sit at home, wait, when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your house and on your gates. So verses four and five says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is a um, very well-known verse. Um, you hear it a lot. But I think it has a lot more meaning than just what we think about. Um, in Jewish homes, these, these two verses make up what is called the Shema. And this originates from a Hebrew word meaning to hear or to listen. Um, but I want to talk about the difference between hearing and listening. I think that hearing means that it's just something that you've learned or learned by the ear. Um, but to listen is to act upon what you have learned, to fulfill what you have learned, to go out and do what you are told to do. And I believe that in these verses, God is asking you to shema, to listen to what he is saying about um, investing in youth and um, investing love into um, all of the younger generations to teach them and stuff. So then going to verse 6, it talks about how this should always be on our hearts and we should live by this. Um, God is telling us, to fix on telling our children about the love of God. Tell them about it all the time um, you get, and just to be a leader to them as well. And then it talks about raising up the next generation, and all you have to do to do that is to show the love of God and obey his rules, and this is just setting an example for so much youth. Um, we already look up to you so much, so just being um, a good Christian is uh, doing so much for us. 
And then it says to tie them as symbols on your hands and on your foreheads. So this means that it can be seen at all times because you can always see your hands and everyone else can always see your forehead. So um, all he is asking is that you are always um, acting like a Christian, showing the love of God because everyone will see that. Next he talks about um, the houses and the gates. The houses is your house, so your home, and the gates is the church. So he is saying that we need to do this in two places, in the houses and in the church as well. And this needs to be the highest priority so that we will carry this with us forever. Like we will always be worrying about um, making sure we're doing the right thing for the younger generations to show them how to live their life. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not part from it. So this is saying that um, you have from zero, when they're born, till they turn 18 or they graduate, this is like the main time that um, you have to invest in your child or the youth because you have so much opportunity with them. And this is like the best time in your life to um, teach the younger generations about God and how to praise him and how to love him. But I'm not saying that once they turn 18 or when they move out that you should completely stop investing in them because there's still so much that can be learned after that. But this is just like the best opportunity. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about movie tickets. Hang on. Okay, so here I have 936 tickets. Here I have 624. And then here is 364, and here is 208, and here is 52. Now, these may just seem like a lot of random numbers or have no meaning, but actually there is a lot of meaning behind this because this is 936, and this is the amount of weeks from the day you are born until the day you graduate. This is... 624 weeks, which is from kindergarten to graduation. This is 364 weeks, which is sixth grade to graduation. And this is 208, which is uh, freshman year to graduation. And this is 52, which is senior year to graduation. So as you can see, the numbers quickly go down. And it's um, kind of scary, but... Um, it's really meaningful because each ticket lost is one week gone. So every week you lose one more ticket. So now we're down to 50 weeks here, just that fast. It's so quickly. So um, now we're going to think of these as raffle tickets. So in a raffle, you put your money in, and you hope that your investment will help you to get your desired prize, like the TV or the gift certificate or something. Um, and obviously, the more tickets you have, the higher chances you have of winning that prize. So if you have 936 tickets as compared to 52, you're going to have a lot higher chance of winning that prize with the 936. So this goes to say that um, it's better to start investing in your child or um, the youth when they're younger, but obviously there's still is so much time that you have and even here, you can make such a big impact on their life that well, they will carry with them forever, as that verse says, that he did not part from it when he was old. So um, all I'm asking in this is that you take a chance on the youth, that you invest in them. And this prize that you will win if you invest in the youth is going to be so much greater than any flat screen TV, concert ticket, vacation, um, because you're going to be helping someone come to Christ. And um, that's going to be the grand prize, is getting someone closer to God. And as I said before, these numbers may seem very low and scary, but I don't mean to scare you because um, I'm just trying to inspire you to see how much time you have left, how little it actually seems like. This is meant to spark you to um, invest in youth more, to start when they're young or start whenever you can to get them to have a relationship with Christ. 
And all you have to do is to teach them um, the word of God, show them how to follow the rules of God, show them how to love God and love others. Um, And this can seem like really hard to focus on, I think, because a lot of times in our life, I feel like we get caught up in like all of the good things that happen in our life, which is fine, but I feel like a lot of times we lose sight of the God things that happen, and um, we lose sight of giving God the glory in those moments that all of those good things are going on, and that's what he's calling us to do, is to see those God moments and to show the younger generations those God moments and to give praise in those, and then that will, um, you'll be such a good leader for those younger generations because they see you doing that, and they're like, I need to do that. So enjoy the good moments, but also praise God in those moments. Um, So I'm going to talk about some ways you can invest in youth now. So the role of the church, um, it is a partnership between the church and the family to invest in the youth. Um, They need to be working together, like at home, and you need to be working. And then, as I said, the gates, which was the church, need to be working together to get this done. But also sometimes it can be hard because um, sometimes there isn't always um, the role at home that is getting done. So um, sometimes the church has to step in and play the role of the family or the house that um, will help to get them on the path of God. So then they have two roles there. But uh, I believe that our church provides us with so many opportunities to serve and um, especially to get involved in the youth's lives. We have so many programs like the uh, Friendship Connection, 648, Revolution, uh, just Bible studies, or even just like talking to the youth because um, you guys know a lot more than us younger people do, and it's such a um, blessing to hear what you have to say and teach us. And a lot of people say that there's a disconnect or a generation gap, but I see past that, and I believe that they, we are more similar than um, we are different. We have some of the same problems we've gone through. Um, we've had some of the same questions. We have some of the same interests. And I think that you should find a person who shares some of those things with you and invest in them. Teach them what you have learned. Show them how to love and um, show them about God. Teach them everything you know about God and answer those questions for them. Help them get through their problems and you are going to make such a big difference in their life. And you may never know how much they need you just to talk to talk to them. So let's go back to movies. Um, let's think of movies as our life, where our life is a movie, okay? So in movies, there's things that happen that are good, and then there's things that happen that are bad. There's lots of similar movies. There's completely different movies. But in the end, there's always the credits. The credits um, are the people who have put time into those movies and invested in those movies. And no matter how big the role is, it can be the main character, or even the key grip, which I have no idea what that is, but they still get noticed. Um, And so those are the people that have invested into that movie. And so I personally want to thank my credits, Justin, Steve, Aaron, my family, and my friends who have invested in me to get me where I am today. And I want you now to think about who have you invested in? Who have you taught about God? Who have you shown the love of God? Who have you helped in their spiritual journey. And I challenge you to find more credits to be involved in. Find more youth who need your help, need your love, just need anything that um, will glorify God, just teach them the word of God. So I challenge you to take your ticket as you leave and maybe you could even win the grand prize. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us all here together today for um, allowing us to come to hear your word, and I pray that we all find someone that we can invest in, um, because God, we need it more than some may think. I just pray that we take the ticket and we win the grand prize, God, that we glorify you and we show your love in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, Rachel, for, uh, for sharing with us today. Let's show our appreciation to you. (Applause) 
This morning we're going to share together in the, the sacrament of Holy Communion. And uh, in the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion, which means that anyone who wishes to come to the Lord's table is in, invited to, to do so. Anyone who wishes to respond to the invitation, and that invitation is to all who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and seek to live in love and charity with your neighbor. If that's the desire of your heart, then, then you're invited to, to come today. We're going to be receiving communion by intention, which means that you'll be invited to come to the center aisle and then come forward. You'll be handed a, a piece of bread, and then you can dip that piece of bread in, in the grape juice. Uh, youth will be serving as communion stewards today. Uh, also here in the, the center on this small table is uh, gluten-free bread. So if uh, you would prefer to receive communion with gluten-free bread, use that, um, the, the bread that's in that tray and, and the cup that is, is there on the table. As we prepare to come to the Lord's table, it's important for us to examine our own hearts and lives. And so in these moments of silence, I would invite you to, to confess your need, confess your sin before our Heavenly Father. Father, forgive us for those times and those ways in which we have opportunities to invest in the lives of children and, and youth, and, and we fail to do so. Lord, forgive us for those, those times in which we believe that we have nothing to share. Lord, I pray that um, as our hearts have been touched and, and challenged in, in this day, that you would help us to to, uh, to respond to children and, and youth in, in ways that is, is making an internal difference and an eternal um, investment in their lives. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. On the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he, he broke the bread and he gave it to them and he said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Also, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. He said, As often as you break bread and drink from this cup, he said, Do it in remembrance of me. And now, Lord, we pray that you would send down your, your blessing upon these symbols of bread and grape juice. May they become for us the body and blood of Jesus that in turn we might be his hands and feet, that we might be a, a conduit through, his, through which his grace would flow in, into the world in which we live. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Well, I would invite the, um, the communion stewards to, to come forward. to rise and carry hope and let love 
shine, show this world that mercy is alive. Now's the time for us to rise and carry hope to hopeless eyes. Show this world that mercy is alive. So it has been requested that the band explain who they are. So I need you to say your name and what year you're in, or if you're a graduate, okay? Um, I'm Sydney Stetler, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Morgan Campbell, and I'm going to be a freshman at Purdue. I am Brett Michael, and I'm going to Purdue. I'm Michael Weaver, and I'm just going to go work. <laughs> I'm Lane Lilly, and I'm going to go to Ivy Tech. Thank you so much. Uh, we have Rachel with a couple next steps she's going to give us. Just kind of move over a little bit. So the next steps for today is to memorize Proverbs 22.6. And to I will find a way to serve in children or youth ministry in the next year. For example, by making dinner for Friendship Connection, snacks for youth, becoming a, life, a lifeguard, or a Sunday school teacher. Thank you, Rachel. And those will be on the back of your connection cards. Um, you, can, you can go down for a little bit. 
Um, so we remind you your connection card. As the offering plates come around, we ask that you please put that in there. Uh, let's go ahead and pray for our offering. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We offer ourselves, God, in just being here. We offer ourselves up to you. But we ask that you take these gifts, these tithes, and these offerings, that you multiply them for the, for the glory of your kingdom, God, so that more lives can be changed. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. As the ushers come forward, Brock Dino is going to give us the announcements. Brock? Hi. Um, Roar Vacation Bible School starts tonight. There, there is still time to sign up or just show up. Uh, we are looking forward to a great week, and come cheer our softball team tomorrow evening at 7.15 p.m. We will be playing at Roosevelt. Um, Soup for the Soul is Tuesday at 4.30. Join us for a meal and fellowship. You can check the bulletin for upcoming announcements and events. It's been a great day, and we're looking forward to seeing you next Sunday at either the drive-in at 8.30 a.m., the classic at 9.30, or the current at 11. Let's stand and sing together one more time. Let us go, take your ticket, and hope you win the grand prize. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.